Hi, welcome to another Stream Developers tutorial. In this video, we will build an Android chat messaging application using Jetpack Compose. We will use the Streams Chat SDK for Android to build a chat messaging application that supports offline mode, reactions, message attachments, threads and replies, and more. Before we create a new project, let's jump to Android Studio and test the final project. From the toolbar, I have already added a device to run the app on. You can see here, I have selected Motorola E32. Let's move to the play button and click run app. You can see now the app is initializing. After the app launches, it presents a list of channels. So over here, we only have three channels now. You can search through the channel list and also perform actions such as swiping to delete. Once you tap any of the channel list items, we go to the messages list. So here we can scroll through a list of messages, both sent and received messages. You can also send a new message by using the message composer. Once you send a message, you can tap and hold the message and reply to the message. Create a new thread reply. You can mark a message as unread. You can copy it, edit the message or pin it to chat. On the top side of the message actions, you can see we have these icons for sending reactions. On the left side of the message composer, you can tap the lightning icon to send instant and jiffy commands. You can also use the attachment icon to send media attachments such as videos, photos, images and documents. So this is basically what we are going to build in this tutorial. To download and test the final project yourself, you can go to this GitHub repo, Stream Tutorial Projects and go to the folder Android Compose. Over here, I have the project in the folder Android Chat. So you can clone it from this repo, run and test the app yourself. So in this tutorial, we will create a new Compose project in Android Studio. Then we will install the Stream Chat SDK and configure it to work with the Android app. I will show you some basic customization options. And finally, we will test the app. So let's go back to Android Studio and create a new project by going to File, New and selecting New Project. Under templates, we will leave the option as phone and tablet and select empty activity and click next. Let's give it a name and save it to a location. So we now have a starter compose project in Android Studio. What we need to do next is to install the stream chat SDK for Android. We are going to install the SDK as a dependency. In the compose project, we can add dependencies in the Gradle scripts folder. So let's expand the Gradle script. Over here, we are going to add a dependency in build.gradle.kotlin. You can see we have two build.gradle files. We have the one that has parentheses project and the name of the app. Then we have the one in parentheses mojo app. So we select the one that has app and scroll down to dependencies. Over here, I'm going to add the following. So we add stream chat Android compose as a dependency and also add a support for offline mode. We also add a support for material icons. After we add these dependencies, we need to sync the Gradle file. The compose chat SDK requires compile SDK version of 34. If you create your compose project with a latest version of Android Studio, then you get this set by default. In this project, I used Android Studio Koala. So you can see this is set as 34 by default. You can also use an older version of Android Studio like Hedgehog. However, if you use anything older than Hedgehog, the compile SDK wouldn't be set by default. So you need to come here and set it as 34. So we have now added the Compose Chat SDK as a dependency to the Android project. What we have to do next is to set up the chat client. To do that, let's open the app folder and also expand Kotlin plus Java. We should do the chat SDK configuration in mainactivity.kotlin. So over here, I'm going to replace all these imports with the following. Below super.oncreate, let's add the following. Over here, we create a stream offline plugin factory to provide the offline support for the chat messaging application. Next, let's create a stream chat client for making API calls. Over here, you can see we add the offline plugin factory, the property we defined here to the chat client. And using the with plugins method, we provide offline storage capabilities for the application. Next, we should connect an authenticated user to the messaging application. In this example, we will use JSON Web Token 
You can also use an anonymous user for testing. For more information about authenticating the user, you can check the token and authentication section of our documentation. So first, we should create a user object over here, consisting of an ID, name, and avatar. Then over here, we will add a connect user function and pass instance of the user with a hard-coded token. So for a real-world application, the token should be generated from your back end. For example, when users log into the application or when they sign up for the first time. You can also find more information about token and authentication in our documentation. I will add a link to the description of the video. Next, in set content, we want to display the UI of the chat messaging application. So here, let's remove the default team and add this property to observe the chat client connection state. Next, we will use the SDK's chat team to present the list of channels. So over here, we render the entire channel screen consisting of title of the screen. We set the screen's header to true and also use the start activity method to present the list of messages once we tap any of the channel list items. The channel activity is mixing, so let's create it in the next. Also, once the app is launching, we display the text initializing. To be able to use the app to chat, we need to add another screen, which is the channel screen. So let's go to File, New, and select Compose. Let's add an empty activity. Then we call it Channel Activity and save it. In our new channel activity, we will add the following imports. I'm going to resolve this later. So in this file below super.oncreate, we need to add ID of the selected channel. The channel ID helps you to display messages. If there is no channel ID, you cannot show messages. Next, let's remove the default team and use the SDK's chat team to display the messages screen. To display the message screen, we should specify the channel ID and message limit. Finally, we have to set up a helper function. The purpose of this helper function is to build an intent for this activity. So that is everything we need to do to build a fully functioning chat messaging application with Compose using the Streams Android Chat SDK. From the toolbar, I still have the device set as Motorola E32. So let's run the app again. You can see here it is now initializing and in a moment, it will present the list of channels. You can tap any of the channel list items to go to the messages list. And over here, we can perform all the message operations as we did earlier. The Android Chat SDK also allows you to do basic theming and advanced customization. With basic theming, you can change fonts, color, and images, like the icons used in the chat messaging application. With advanced customization, you can swap the SDK provided UI components with your own implementation. So let's look at how to do a basic theming. Here we have an image of the messages list. You can see the avatar of the incoming message is circular. We can modify the circular avatar with basic theming so that we use a rounded rectangle instead of clipping it into a circular shape. We can do this basic theming implementation in the main activity Kotlin file by replacing the content of set content. Let's fold set content and replace it with the following. So over here, we implemented a shape parameter to replace all the default parameters of the user avatar, attachment, the outgoing message bubble, and also incoming message bubble, as well as the input field. So after adding this implementation, if you run the app again, you should see an image similar to this one. So instead of a circular avatar, you can now see we have a rounded rectangle. So that is everything we have in this video. I encourage you to check the Android documentation to learn more about the Compose UI components. You can also check the advanced customization section to build unique chat experiences for your Android app. With this, we will end here. Thanks for joining me in building an in-app Android chat messaging application using Jetpack Compose.